Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Hello, I'm Phil Blizzard in Dubai with Travel Wise as we take a look at what's happening in the world of uh, tourism, travel and aviation. And we have another aviation special following on from our special last time in the last edition of the Travel Wise podcast when we were looking at the return to uh, flying of the Fly Dubai Boeing 737 MAX, which, by the way, is still available if you missed that one. still available on all good podcast channels, including Apple and Gami, Spotify, Deezer, etc., etc. This time we continue aviation by looking looking at the business aviation aspect of flying and uh, looking at the increasing growth and development of business aviation, which is being uh, speeded up by yeah, the, the pandemic. Now, on this occasion, I'm going to be talking to Thomas Fleur, who's the founder and chairman of Vista Global Holding. And uh, they have seen significant demand for business aviation over the last uh, six months and a more. And they're, one of their divisions, Vista Jet, is very much in the focus. They've just bought two of the new global 7500 aircraft or 7500 aircraft uh, from Bombardier. Now this aircraft is very very significant. It's the largest um, what should we say business jet which is flying and it's got the longest range, for example, from Dubai to the uh, west coast of America, Dubai to San Francisco, for example. So I had the pleasure of catching up with Thomas Floor because he's just flown in with that aircraft into Dubai Al Maktoum Airport, where there is a big, big uh, aviation hub for private aviation. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Well, we're doing a, a special focus today on business aviation, and it's a great pleasure to join us, one of the experts from the world of business aviation, Thomas Floor, who's the founder and chairman of Vista Jet. So, Thomas, you've flown in, I believe, on a brand new aircraft. We'll come on to that in a moment. But first of all, let's have a quick overview, a snapshot of how things were for you and the aviation sector, business aviation, in 2020. Yeah, sure. Hi. It's a great pleasure being with you. Um, if we do a quick snapshot on 2020. Sure. We all know that the commercial infrastructure has uh, around the globe actually uh, more or less collapsed and and uh, airlines are of course depending on a load factor uh, meaning that they take off when enough mm. people are on, on the on the aircraft so business aviation comes exactly from the other end uh, if somebody wants to fly point to point then the flight is paid for uh, so we do not depend on on that load factor so what we saw is that that actually in, in, in April, early May last year, also business aviation was heavily affected, but we saw a very, very steep recovery, what we call the V-shaped recovery, whereby by you know the, the end of the third quarter last year, uh, we were already uh, more or less at the 2019 level in terms of traffic. And that's mainly due to the demand around the world to fly to you know the remotest locations sure. um, on a basis that commercially it was not possible anymore. And if it was possible, then maybe with two or three airport changes and then the, the concerns about health and safety, uh, the more touch points you have by changing aircraft, etc., drove corporations, and I think this is a key point here, that corporations drove for their travel needs to business aviation. And, and that trend continued really oh. into the fourth quarter. And, um, and, and that really concluded 2020 for us uh, at, at Vista at, um, at pre-pandemic levels. Right. We've been talking about uh, the advantages of private business aviation on, on my various programs over the last 12 months. And touch points is a very key thing you mentioned there. So the fewer the touch points, the better the safety aspects and uh, also the fact that convenience, you, you fly when you want to. So that's, I guess, a great appeal. But Staying with you at the moment and Vista Jet, where have you seen the biggest growth in terms of uh, the type of customers and also the regions of the world? Yeah, I, I, I mean, we are right here at the center of, of, of uh, demand other than America itself. Uh, we all know that the UAE stayed more or less uh, decently open, I, I would say, that yeah. you know, except except the close down in, in the Q2 last year. But uh, we, we see a lot of corporations on around the world to conduct their meetings in the UAE, their global meetings. So so Dubai, uh, between Al Maktoum and the Dubai International, became the number one destination in the Vista world. It's never happened before, and so then we're now at the, at, at the number one spot. So, of course, you know, Dubai, UAE connects um, India, far, Southeast so. Asia, Europe easily. 
and um, and and that's really where where we see the significance of of this region here. The, the convenience factor, Phil, is one thing, um, but it's it's really the time saving, the efficiency of business aviation, of where. You know, when, when you think about travel, you know, a lot of people think about just the main hubs to main hubs. So London, Dubai, maybe, maybe uh, Hong Kong. But the real needs are much more, you know, point to point, remoter city to remoter city. And that's where business aviation comes in, where in today's world, a lot of meetings are, of course, on Zoom. But when people need to travel, they're now making budgets available to take three or four or five executives mm. and pay a little more than the air, than the airline ticket, but actually go on a private uh, uh, private aircraft, you know, fly to the destination, conduct the meeting, come straight back, and and that is something we were telling corporations for so many years uh, that this is the most efficient way, the most value creation, and now through the pandemic, mm. uh, corporations were driven as the only alternative uh, to, for, for so, so going by what you're saying there, the COVID pandemic has uh, taken uh, your message to the corporations. And, of course, the Middle East has seen a lot of growth, significant growth when it, came, when it comes to uh, private aviation leading up to the pandemic. And that's witnessed by the Dubai Air Show, the MIBA Show, and, uh, you know, the general conversation. So from, let's have a little bit more about VistaJet. I, I think you have – how does it work? You have a, you have a membership option? Yes, yes. So it's, it's, we try to make this very, very simple. So we have a fleet of a total of about 160 aircraft around the world. Um, they're all identical. So you know exactly what you get when you arrive at the airport. And, and what you do is you, you would determine with us the number of hours you need per year. Yeah. So let's call it 200 hours of flying. Then you would have a simple subscription uh, uh, agreement, a three year contract every year, 200 hours. You have some flexibility. Uh, you can upgrade within the fleet. So for a short hop, maybe you take a Challenger aircraft. But uh, for a very long haul flight, you can upgrade to the uh, to the Global Express. So there is no need anymore to buy an aircraft, and I think that's the key message. Aircraft ownership is capex. Corporations sure. do not like capex. The CFO doesn't like capex. Uh, with us, it's a travel <laughs> budget. And, and if you look at publicly traded companies today, it becomes more and more a, a no-go to have a business jet on your balance sheet. That's so got to be very, turn, hmm. that's got to be very yeah, appealing. So the CapEx is all your responsibility. You're the owner exactly. of the aircraft. You maintain the aircraft and everything that it entails to have a, a business jet flying. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. So, uh, moving on now to you've just flown in. Uh, where from? And on board the brand, uh, well, the largest uh, aircraft, mm-hmm. business aviation aircraft, and one which has got the longest range, the Bombardier Global seventy five hundred. Well, it's it's. Uh, I placed the order in twenty twelve, so for me it was a it was a nine year wait. So, <laughs> okay, uh, yes. it, 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 it was worth every second. Uh, it, it's a game changer. It is. Uh, there's a couple of features which are most outstanding for me. Other than the range, uh, it connects now the UAE with any point in the world nonstop, which, right. as you know, only some of the airlines could offer if you needed to go to San Francisco yeah. or Australia. Yeah. And now it's possible on a business trip. But there's a p- permanent stateroom in the back. So when you fly very long hauls, you do want to catch rest. So there is a bedroom in the back, which is key for, for your for your um, for your uh, recovery and your resting, the, the the oxygen flow in the air, in the aircraft is very very high. Uh, it means that you feel fresh when you land. The cabin pressure is only at about four thousand feet. So again, uh, onto your system on those long haul mm. flights, you feel very very uh, fresh when you arrive at the other end. So a bit like and the Dreamliner, is it in terms of that uh, air yes. pressure? Yes. Yes, and then even even more advanced than that. And then okay. lastly. Um, it, it, it's, it's really the speed. So this this aircraft uh, flies at uh, just sub uh, subsonic, which is at 0.92 wow. mach, and it, it just oh. sh- uh, it off uh, it shaves off a good hour on your on your on your triplet. Mm. Before I can ask you about how appealing this aircraft will be to corporates in the UAE, we like facts and figures. And I did a bit of research, and I, I've got a figure that this aircraft costs around about 73 US a million dollars, and that's without any fittings. That's just the aircraft itself. Is that correct? That's that's correct. No, with that price, you will you will get the entire interior. Oh, Depending will. on if you have some very special okay. uh, requirement, it would get you it would get you a fully fitted, ready to operate aircraft. Okay. And what's your inventory going to be regarding this aircraft? So we're planning to roll out twelve aircraft um, wow. over the next twenty four months. The first two have been uh, delivered. We're the first commercial operator having this aircraft in the world. 
and we just see it in the demand uh, profiles of our clients. Mm. And especially in this region here, uh, it now allows you to reach any, as I said earlier, any point nonstop. And uh, and it, there was sometimes a, a question mark for an executive CEO or, or entrepreneur said, okay, do I hop on? on an airline first class and go nonstop or do I take a business jet and stop somewhere? And frankly, yeah. some, some, some executive said, well, I'd rather hop, hop on an airline, but I have to go through a big airport. Sure. Now these things are over. You can hop on, you go to Al Maktoum, uh, obviously, you know, the terminal there, very, very easy. Uh, you, you boarded the aircraft, 10 minutes later, you're airborne and you can take this anywhere. Uh, anytime non-stop and that's the driver of demand that is so appealing and uh, as you say a big demand uh, for private aviation in this region so how, how do you see the global 7500 fitting into the profile of your uh, corporate clients and private uh, customers in this region well what we allow clients to do is they they subscribe to the program uh, of the aircraft they need the most so maybe if it's just regional need but once or twice a year very long haul uh, we would sign up the hours on the designated aircraft type. However, we leave the flexibility to upgrade at any point in time to the much bigger aircraft. So we're tailoring it to the actual need. And, and I, I think what, you know, sometimes the, 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 when you analyze this industry, what, what people not appreciate is that even if you buy an airplane, it would be my opinion that you always buy the wrong one. Because if you just have regional needs and once or twice a year you need to go long haul, then you need to stop and refuel and, and all those complications. Sure. Or you buy a bigger aircraft, and then I personally think it's a it's a waste uh, to deploy a big aircraft on a quick hop over to Kuwait or to Riyadh, and 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 it could be good. So we're tailoring the need and therefore just give you always the aircraft for the mission that you need to undertake. And, and that's highly appreciated, especially from the CFOs of these corporations, sure. because uh, every dollar saved is a dollar, um, uh, you know, they can spend uh, on, on, on their own business. Absolutely. I can see what you mean by having uh, this model for, uh, for the attractions of this model. And a comparison, I remember looking at Marina at the moment, there's some very large super yachts here, and they don't move very often. So there's a lot of money tied up with that for the occasional trip. So I guess it's the same with business aviation. And I just want to go on now and perhaps wrap things up. It's been great talking to you, and I really appreciate your time because you're so busy. But what are, what are the prospects for you and uh, VistaJet this coming year? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing the demand um, at an unprecedented level. Um, the, we, 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 we had a first quarter at all-time record levels. And, and, the, and the future indicator is really the number of new sign-ups. So we have two brands. One is the VistaJet brand, which competes with aircraft ownership. More than right. 40% above last year's new sign-up or new subscriptions. At EXO, which is the entry brand, yeah. um, it's, the, um, it, it, it's the, the charter brand, uh, uh, we're seeing a, a stunning figure of 3x, three times more sign-ups wow. than a year ago. And, and it's really the, 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 re the requirement of corporations that they want to be part of a aviation solution that gets the executives any time at shortest notice on a quality product. And, and, and I, think, I think that is really the, the future demand curve, uh, which is uh, being locked in today um, so, by, by, by signing up on those memberships. So significant growth in terms of membership, and uh, that's uh, going to be the future, I guess, regarding corporate and uh, private aviation, not only here in the Middle East, but across the world. So, Thomas, many, many thanks for joining us. One final thing, where are you taking the global uh, 7500 when you depart Dubai? Uh, I will fly to Milan. Okay, lovely. Well, have a good trip, <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing the aircraft at some point. Very good, Phil. Great talking to you, and Super. come to Al Maktoum. I'll introduce you to the aircraft. Love, love to. Okay, all the best. Take care. Thank Safe you. travels. Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views, and interviews. Talking there with Thomas Floor, a founder and chairman. Many thanks for joining us on the Travel Wise podcast. Uh, Thomas being the founder and chairman of Vista Global and their division Vista Jet, and we'll focus very much there on the new global 7500 aircraft from Bombardier. I'm Phil Blizzard and look forward to joining you again for another edition of Travel Wise. 
Travel Wise with Phil Blizzard. News, views and interviews. Right, we'll have updates of uh, the travel situation across the region on my weekly travel show on Capital Radio, Saturday afternoons, Capital Radio UAE, Saturday afternoons between 2 and 5. It's called Wish You Were Here and you can join me from anywhere in the world online with www capitalradiouae.com and if you would like to have a podcast production for your organisation do get in touch with me drop me an email philblizzardmedia at gmail.com a Phil Blizzard radio production travel wise aviation news flown in by Sea Wing Seaplane Tours Sea Dubai as never before